So, do you know what the most Google question in the world is? Before you answer, just think about how many times you Google things every day and then how many people are doing the exact same as you. There are a trillion Google searches every year and do you know what the number one question asked is? The answer is this, who am I? Who am I? And I think that's wildly depressing, right? And it's depressing for a couple of reasons. Firstly, because Google is not exactly a great source of finding answers to questions like this. It's a pretty evil company, right? Googling this is kind of like asking Satan himself to be your life coach. That idea is terrible. So that's one reason why it's depressing. But the other one is this, the fact that there are people all over the planet looking to a search engine to tell them who they are shows that we are in the midst of a worldwide identity crisis. Naya Okami may look like a human, but she identifies as a wolf. A few hundred years ago, people were not struggling with this issue. They were not trying to figure out their identity in the way that we are today. What happened back then is your identity was given to you. You were born into a certain society. You were born into a very localized, small setting. You didn't really travel. You didn't have social media. Nobody went to Coachella, right, or Burning Man to try and find themselves. And I don't know why going to some concert somewhere would be a journey of self-discovery, but to each their own. But back in the day, you didn't really have much choice as to what your identity was. In those days, your identity was marked by your gods, by your duty to others, by your local community. And it was kind of set in stone. You didn't really have a choice. On it. Identity was inherited, like eye color, hair color, crushing debt, those kind of things. It was your family, it was your tribe, it was your nation, it was your religion. And that's not to say that that's perfect, by the way, definitely not. There are downsides, and we found out those downsides in the 1900s. After the two most violent conflicts in human history, we figured out that there are downsides to tribalism, there are downsides to imperialism, there are downsides to finding your identity in your local group at the expense of others. And so in the period after that we found coming into the mainstream of societal thought when it comes to identity was that we need to find a new way to form our identities. If you take the boomer generation, the Gen X generation, they tended to find their identities a lot more in their career. It was about economic advancement climbing the ladder and like in the former idea of finding your identity in family and community and so on, they weren't entirely wrong either. God has called us to work, that is part of what we're meant to do. But there are downsides to that. Consumerism, workaholism, the emptiness of stuff that ultimately doesn't satisfy the way that we think it's going to do. And so the last couple of generations, the millennials and the Gen Zs, they've said, oh, that's not really sufficient either. We don't wanna have just that. It's not just about your money and your stuff. I love stuff. Unfortunately, they've gone the wrong way around replacing it. And so millennials and Gen Z, instead of looking to something higher and truer, they've looked inwardly to find their identity. And they've sort of gone into like a big new age spirituality with maxims like speaking your truth. You've got to be true to yourself. Follow your heart. Unfortunately, this doesn't work either. That's why they're Googling who am I? Because you cannot find your identity in isolation. You are not an island. No one is an island. I'm an island boy. Your family and your history and your nation and your community and your culture are a key part of who you are. And you cannot find identity apart from those things. And the modern attempt to do so has failed, which is why young people today are known as the most lonely generation in history. Now, part of the way they've attempted to solve this is by getting really into identity politics. And people are now trying to find their identities in their race or their gender or their sexuality or their minority victim status. I'm the victim here! But now what we've ended up with is the same kind of divided society that led to two world wars, but with brand new identity groups. And when all of your identity is bound up in your gender or your sexuality or your race, then what you find is that your attitude towards those things is extraordinarily heightened. So anybody who disagrees with you about sexual ethics or about why there are disparities between different groups is not simply having a disagreement, they are attacking your identity. Disagreeing is now considered a personal assault. Silence is violence, that's what we're hearing, right? And it's destructive to yourself and it is destructive to others. So how do we resolve this? How do we figure out who we are? Who am I? Let me take a quote from C.S. Lewis because I think he sums it up perfectly. Look for Christ and you will find him and with him everything else, including yourself. The solution to the identity crisis is to not try to find yourself at all. 
The Bible says nothing about finding yourself. The journey of Christianity is not a journey inwards. It is a journey upwards. And a lot of the stuff that we see brought into Christianity is not Christianity at all. You've got people walking labyrinths, which is all about getting to the center, which is yourself. You have people doing the Enneagram, which is once again all about figuring out who you are. And that is not going to find you anything that is worth finding. And Christianity manages to both find the best bits and avoid the pitfalls of the historic way of viewing this and of the modern way. See, Christianity tells us that we are made in the image of God. There is something unique about you, that's true. But at the same time, the Bible's very clear that we're also sinful. You can't just look into yourself to find your identity because what you will find is sin. You will go wrong if you only look to yourself. You need an outside authority. You need something beyond yourself. And so it rejects the modern view of looking inwards. But it also doesn't say, well, look to people. Look to an outside authority that is merely a human authority. There are human authorities. The Bible acknowledges them and honors them. But it also says that the ultimate authority to which you are responsible is God himself. He is not a warped outside authority. He is not a domineering outside authority. He is a good and loving and just outside authority. And the Bible pulls all of these things together when it comes to identity. And it is very clear that our identity is not in humanity, whether that is other people around us or it is in ourselves. Our identity is ultimately in Christ. It is in Jesus that we find ourselves. In fact, if you want to transform your view of self, can I encourage you to do something? Don't Google it. Look to the Bible for answers. Okay, if you want homework, if you want a YouTube channel to give you homework, I'm gonna give you some. You're not the boss of me. Go through the Bible and find all the places where it talks about who we are in Christ. Look for the words in whom, in him, in Christ, those kind of things. And read one of them every single day and meditate, think about it for about three minutes. That will change your view of yourself entirely. Even if you're not a Christian, I guarantee if you do this, it will change your view of yourself. And I'm pretty confident if you did do it, by the end of it, you'll become a Christian. If you're looking to find yourself, look to the one who made you, who died for you, who loves you more than you will ever love yourself, and who knows you better than you will ever know yourself. Figure out who Jesus is. And when you find who he is, you will find yourself with him. By the way, if you like this video and you like that quote, you can buy a t-shirt or a hoodie or a sweatshirt with that quote on it at wearecontramundum.com. That is the website which helps support and fund this channel. So you can get one of those or any of the great Christian apparel that they have there. I would encourage you to check it out. You can also fund this channel on Patreon. And seeing as we've talked about reading the Bible to see who God says we are, if you want to know how to read your Bible better, then this next video is for you. Do you want to say bye-bye? You can say bye-bye. Bye-bye for watching this video.